Hey, thanks for watching. This is a quick video introducing you to the concept of humidity. And specifically, we're going to be focusing on relative humidity. We're going to talk about a few other things around that. This is not an advanced psychometrics course. This is an introduction to humidity for technicians or people who are looking to get into the trade who really don't understand its significance. So first off, air has weight and takes up space. I know it seems like air is nothing. You know, this stuff around me, it's clear. You can't see it, but it does have weight and it does take up space. And it's actually pretty significant. It makes up, you know, it's actually what makes up our atmosphere. And so at sea level, which we're pretty close to here in central Florida where I am, at sea level, we have 14.7 pounds per square inch of pressure pushing down on us on all sides because of the atmosphere that's above us. And that atmosphere, the air around us, is made up of a few different kind of key components. And the primary things that make up air are nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, argon, a bunch of other trace gases, and water vapor. And the amount of water vapor is actually pretty variable. It changes quite a bit, and it changes with a few different factors. And there's pretty deep science into this. Water is a really, really crazy thing. It's got a lot of really unique properties. And so I don't intend to give you an entire physics and chemistry course here, but it's something that I would encourage you to look into more. There's a lot of really interesting facts about water, but, but water does change its levels in the atmosphere, and it depends a lot on temperature. Just to be clear, when we say relative humidity, what are we saying? We're saying the humidity relative to the amount of humidity there could be. And that term of could be is the maximum. That's what we call saturation. So 100% relative humidity is also called saturation, is also called the dew point temperature. And that is the point at which the air is no longer going to hold any more moisture. In fact, if there is any moisture and it hits dew point, that moisture is going to start coming out. So a cloud is an example. You know, you have that water vapor that rises up. Water vapor is actually lighter than air. A lot of people think they don't get that because they think, oh, it feels muggy out here. But actually, water vapor is lighter than air. And so water vapor travels up into the atmosphere and eventually it hits dew point and it actually makes these clouds, these formations. And so that's what that's what clouds are. And then eventually you get enough buildup and then they'll actually start to rain. That that's we experience that all the time. If you go outside and you see dew on the lawn, you've experienced dew point. If you see some droplets of water on a glass of water, you've experienced dew point. If you've ever woken up in the morning and looked at your windows and on the outside there was some water on the outside of the glass, that's because the air hit dew point. And another way of saying dew point is 100% relative humidity. That means that the air cannot hold any more moisture. And in reality, it's actually not even that the air, because air doesn't really hold moisture. It's just moisture is a constituent part of the air. That's a that's a little bit more advanced there. But the, the basic idea that you need to know, and the most important thing, is that relative humidities vary, but the amount of moisture that the air can hold is contingent on a few factors, but the biggest one being temperature. So the hotter that air is, the more total amount of moisture it can hold. So you have a cold day, the air can hold less moisture. So you could be at 100% relative humidity on a cold day or with a cold air mass and have less moisture in the air than you have on a hot day. And my favorite example of this is a glass of tea or a glass of coffee. If you take cold coffee, cold tea, you try to stir sugar in it, you'll notice that the sugar does not dissipate. It isn't absorbed into the fluid. Now you heat up that same cup of coffee or that same cup of tea, and now all of a sudden the sugar starts to disappear because the hotter coffee, the hotter tea can hold more sugar. So the air, when it is warmer, when it is hotter, when it is higher temperature, can hold more moisture. And so we often will kind of equate things. We'll say it's hot and humid outside. But it depends on what we mean by humid. We could mean the total amount of moisture that it has, or we could mean the relative humidity. So you could have a time where it's, say, I don't know, 40 degrees outside, and you could have very high relative humidities. You could have 80% relative humidities. But now you take that same air, if you were to put it in a jar or something, and heat it up, and that relative humidity would keep dropping as long as there was no exchange of moisture in or out of it. Because relative humidity is relative to the amount of moisture it can hold. And warmer air can hold more moisture. Colder air can hold less moisture. So there's two different things you have to look at. Total moisture content, which we generally measure in pounds uh, or we measure it in grains, and then also relative humidity. Um, there's a lot of different things that you need to know about humidity from a practical standpoint. One is, is that humidity is a huge driver in comfort and indoor air quality. When relative humidities are higher, it affects our body's ability to reject heat via evaporation, which is sweat, but you don't have to be soaked in sweat to be evaporating a little bit. Our body gives off you know, a small amount of moisture and it, and it, it 
exchanges with the our atmosphere and it causes us to be cooled. And so when we have higher relative humidities, we do feel sticky and muggy. And that's because our body isn't able to reject heat. And when our body's not able to reject heat via evaporation, we don't feel right. This is why from a comfort standpoint, relative humidities between 30 and 60% relative humidities are really what you look for. In humid climates, you want to try to keep it right around 50% relative humidity. And in drier climates, you'd like to try to keep it eh, 35, 40% relative humidity if you can. That's for, for human comfort. The lower the relative humidity, the colder we tend to feel because the lower the relative humidity, the more our body gives up heat via evaporation. And so that's a, that's a big factor, especially when it's hot outside. That's why people, you know, where I am in Orlando tend to feel very hot, even when, it, you know, at a temperature like 90 degrees, whereas in Phoenix, Arizona, where it's very dry, it might be over 100 and not feel even quite as hot as it does here because the relative humidity is so low there that your body is able to reject heat through evaporation more easily. So that's a big factor. Indoor air quality also. When you're in that sort of center range, you know, between 40 and 50% relative humidity where you like to be, then a lot of the conditions that people have with either on the dry side, their mucous membranes drying out and feeling uncomfortable, or on the wet side, different bacteria and fungus and things can grow in the air and can cause more problems. You also tend to get more moisture buildup due to condensation on walls and around vents and things that can cause unhealthy conditions. And so controlling relative humidity is really, really important in the HVAC industry. There's a lot of different strategies that we use to do that, but most of our dehumidification within air conditioning happens on the evaporator coil. So that's the removal of moisture on the evaporator coil because that evaporator coil gets cold and it hits what we call dew point. And we mentioned that, but that's the temperature at which the air hits 100% relative humidity and starts to give up its moisture. So that's why the air comes in contact with that evaporator coil, drops the air temperature, and now all of a sudden that moisture is sort of squeezed out of the air onto that evaporator coil and it drains outside. And that's how we dehumidify the air using air conditioning. But we kind of are behind the eight ball because simultaneously as we squeeze some of that moisture out of the air, we're also cooling it. And so we're also reducing the amount of moisture that that air can hold. So as air goes through the duct system as a, on an air conditioner when it's cooling, the relative humidity of that air is actually quite high until that air hits the space, mixes with the other air, and now the relative humidity drops back down again. So relative humidity is always relative to temperature. Hotter air can hold more relative humidity cooler air can hold less relative humidity. Hopefully that's a good starting point for you there. We'll catch you on the next video.